What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dawson's Fish Tanks, bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. So we are deep in the small tank series, and I gotta tell you, I'm having a riot with it, folks. So two weeks ago, we set up a five gallon. Last week, we set up a 10 gallon, and this week, we're gonna set up a 15 gallon. Or we're not going to set up a 15-gallon aquarium because apparently there is not a 15-gallon aquarium available for sale in my town. That's right. I called PetSmart. I called Defco. I called Pet Supermarket. I went into MVP Pets. I went to Myers. I went to Walmart. I went all over the place and could not find a 15-gallon. Not to worry. I got one on order. But we don't have a 15-gallon. Not to worry. I'm going to revisit both the 5-gallon that we set up a couple weeks ago, the 10-gallon that we set up last week. But this is the small tank series. we got to keep it moving. Tens of wolves, common size. You can get around town. Why not set up another 10 for you entirely different than the one I set up last week? Small tank series, baby. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mr. That's right, folks. So today we're staying with the 10 gallon, but before we jump into setting up another 10, I want to show you where we are with both the 5 gallon and the 10 gallon that we set up last week. So last week I showed you how we went above the rim with the 10 gallon. This tank is low light and super easy plants. We're using the hardscape as the focal point, obviously emphasis as we are climbing up out of the top of the rim. No, while I hadn't thought about it at the time, a couple of people pointed out that this tank does have a resemblance to the rock in the Lion King. So we're going to play a little bit with the Lion King. But now I want to point something out in this tank that I think a lot of people don't take the time to do. And that's stopping and watching the plants. Fish tanks aren't paintings. They aren't one and done. They evolve. They grow in or they don't grow in. You have to, under, you have to understand this. You have to give them time to adjust and patiently wait on them. Too many people think they're just going to throw everything in and bam, it's going to be perfect out of the gate. That's simply not the case. No ma'am. Now we need to give our tanks time to set up and adjust and grow in. We need to put our phones down and we actually need to observe nature. As the wonderful Joe Rogan points out, nature is the great balancer. And to tie that in with the late great prophet of our aquarium hobby, the late Takashi Amano said, Creating nature is the ultimate luxury. So we're going to take a look at the 10 gallon just after one week as well as the five gallon. All right, so you can see after just seven days, not a whole lot is going on in this tank. However, we do have some new growth on the Elodea. Note, this plant over here does this, okay? This is the tip of the Elodea anacris right here. Now, no, it's not growing new growth out of here, but if we look closer, we can see we've got a tiny little bit of new growth coming out of the bottom here. And this is what this plant does. It actually grows little side shoots. If you can see this, I'll zoom in for you right there. You can see how the little side nubs, those bright green things, that's how Elodea rolls. So Elodea is coming out the side. I like to use easy, okay, super easy plants as my guide. So the Elodea is doing good. You'll also notice it's just a tad taller as well than we originally started. So we've got that as a guide. We know that's rolling, rolling well. Speaking of easy plants, let's take a look at this Java fern. The Java fern is now more straight out and has a slightly fuller look to it. This growth isn't as clear to see as the Elodea. Generally speaking, thicker the plant's leaves, the slower it's gonna grow. You can notice that it is in a shadow right there, so it is getting hit with the light, and that leaf certainly is healthy. Uh, Java fern has thick, rugged leaves. We're not gonna expect it to do a whole lot here. It's a rough, rugged, bulletproof plant. Speaking of thicker plants, you can check out this Anubius Gigantia we have growing here. You can see it does have a little bit of vein of growth. However, this leaf is starting to pale. That's totally fine. A better example of it can be seen over here. Look, I've imported over a thousand of these in my day. I know what to look for with Gigantia. This upper leaf right here needs to be cut because it was prepared for another type of setup than it's currently in. However, look underneath here. In just one week's time, we've got new growth right here coming off right there. So this plant is totally fine. It just simply needs trimmed because we've already got new growth in one week's time that is adapting to this. So the leaves with the spots and whatever need to be removed. And that's what we're going to do. Let's roll down and take a look at the crap shoot in here. I want to show you guys the Siswasser tang. And this Siswasser tang has paper thin leaves, no roots, and it's kind of just a funky little plant. And it's doing absolutely nothing at this time. However, that doesn't mean it won't come back. It's in there, it's kind of melted off a little bit, but you can see there is a little bit of green growth underneath there. So we're just gonna clean that off and let that be. You can also see it uh, over here at this side right here. I put Java Moss in with it. I don't know if they're competing or what have you, but there is a little bit of green on the Siswasser Tang. So I'm not overly worried about where this little, so this bit of Siswasser Tang is headed. 
last but certainly not least, I want to take a look at the Java Moss we got growing in here. You'll note I never use Java Moss in hardly any of my tanks intentionally because it grows everywhere, grows like crazy, and gets all over the place. However, in this tank, I am really digging it. I think that this, this setup with this hardscape that's so overpowering and these bright orange rocks, I really like the idea of the Java Moss really just growing in all thick through in here, down through in there. And I think there's so much hardscape in here that Java Moss softening can only be doing this tank some good. So I do like the way that, that is rolling in here right now. It's only getting better. Ultimately, it will become a pain to deal with. But right now, I'm really digging it. I think it's going to soften this whole setup nicely. Let's move over to the five gallon. Now we're gonna roll over to the five gallon. Now creatively, I had to take a break away from this tank for just a minute. I didn't really like know or like where the scape was going, so I took a pause and I'm rolling back in. I did add this tiny little bit of Boost of Philandra in here. And you can see this boost actually has that tiny little bit of growth at the center there that's kind of coming up above. You can see that little tiny new growth. That's what you're looking for. That's how you know you're headed in the right direction. So I've got two prime examples that I want to share with this tank of what to look for when you're setting up a new tank at that two-week mark. And one of them is my favorite plants of all time. It's Sunday. It's Species Sunday. Got to bring it to you. Got to talk about the wonderful dwarf sag that I've got going on here. Now this is a primo example of what to look for. Please note, look at this plant. You have the outer growth is yellowing, withering, whatever, not looking so hot. Look at the center though, folks. That's all you need to focus on, the center of that leaf right there, that neon green growth right there. You can also see it over here. We've got yellowing growth on the outside, which can and probably should be removed because it's not doing the plant any good. But if you look at the center, that tiny little bit of green growth in the middle there, that means the plant is fine. The plant is establishing. The plant is doing good. I've got another example, though, back here in the back. This is Telanthera cardinalis up here. I want to show this. This leaf is clearly not doing any good, so I'm going to remove it. You can see it's translucent. That's totally fine. Get that out of there. But note, see how we've got new growth going right here? That's all you need to look for. We've got new growth here. Same thing in the fact with the back with this foxtail right here. This foxtail took a beating. I hacked it down. You can see it's kind of like graying out or whatever, but it's got new growth. So if we've got new growth, we're headed in the right direction. So the two-week mark, the two, three-week mark is really the key mark where you start to see the evolution of these plants really getting used to their environment. I've also got this plant floating up here, and this is done intentionally. I wanted to grow out the roots a tiny bit longer on it. So if you've got a plant that you're not sure of how it's going to grow for you, float it for a minute. I floated this Telanthera cardinalis. It's got nice new growth at the top there, and now I can plant it back down in. You can notice this Telanthera cardinalis right here. I let this float for a while. That's fine. I'm doing that to get this longer root growth out of it. And I'm going to put it back down in here in the back. Kind of get it going. So it's had time to kind of float up. It's gotten some highlight. Now I'm planting it back down in there. These plants take time. They need time to adjust. And if I haven't hammered home the plant adjustment time enough for you all, let me give you a little bit of analogy for some of you parents with children that might be heading back to school soon. Thank goodness, right? Yeah. Think about like your kids. I got one kid. She went to orientation. She ran in like she owned the place, made a bunch of new friends. No problem. My other daughter, not so much. She was a little more shy, a little more reserved. Takes a little bit of time. Think about it. Mikey's not eating with Timmy anymore at lunch. Mikey's got a new teacher. You get the idea. Plants take time to adjust. They need two weeks. Kids take time to adjust. Everything will get in the groove. Give it a little bit of time. They're going to be a little cranky at first. You're going to put them to bed tired because they're in a new environment. Same deal with your tanks when you're setting up the first couple weeks. That said, let's go set up another 10 gallon, shall we? All right, folks. So now we're going to set up another 10. Don't worry, the 15 gallon is on order. But this 10 is going to be kind of complementary to the 10 we did last week. You recall last week we had the big high up out of the water scape or whatever went above the rim. This week is the tank that's going to sit. If these were two tanks side by side, they'd connect one scene because I'm going to have a beach sandy scene right here go into a rock formation and a bunch of plants coming out the side. So we're going to use the same substrate that we did last week. i fix my, my ghetto stand a little bit here get that sturdy enough. We're going to use pool filter sand. However, I reserve the right to use something non-pool filter sand over in the corner because I'm going to put some stem plants. We're going to put some stratum over there. Pool filter sand, 50 pound bag, it's 10 bucks. What I'm going to do is pour this in. And this just defines everything for me, kind of gets everything going. This hasn't been rinsed. I'm not going to put a lot in. 
but I'm going to keep it low, and I'm only putting it in on this side to start. A little bit in. I'm going to smash this around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm leaving this other side open because the rock work's coming in here. I've got some of these rocks. I don't know how many of them that I'll use, but I'm going smaller scale here. I'm only going to go like part of the way up. I've got these. What I want to do is create I want to create a uh, like a barrier, kind of around here. It kind of gives us a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a divide, if you will. And these are actually wet, so this is the color that they will look like when they're in the tank. It's always a good key. So, just kind of throwing these around in here. Then the kicker is that I really want to incorporate this little tree that I made the other night in here. So, just to be small, I'm actually going to add some more sand in there. So these little rocks aren't going to stay right now. Bring some more sand in over here. got that. Now what I want to work in is this tree right here. So what I want this to do is to kind of come out off of this right here. I might add another tree, but I want this to kind of come and play like that. So kind of wedge that in there. To get this tree going. Now I don't want the tree dead center. I actually want it over a little bit. You never I never like to put anything dead center at all. So I'm actually going to move it back. You'll note this is made with a couple of different sticks that I've pulled together with the electric uh, electric wire ties or whatever. So I'm actually going to pull this back here. So what I want this to do is I want this little tree here and it may not actually be the right tree but I want this tree to kind of take your eye and pull you out from this space over here and in so I might add like a real long branch kind of to it and of course you always have the best seat in the house which is fine because that's what I'm here for but I want to bring you kind of in a little bit I really want this to my vision is that this this branch would point down and kind of go along. I've got plenty of trees to work with here. That's it, Dusty. And that's how we're going to do it right there. And again, it's what you like, not what I like. What I like, or excuse me, it's what I, it's what I what you like, not what I like. And I, if I like this, that's great. If you hate it, that's fine too. It's uh, what is pleasing to you, and uh, in this case, what's pleasing to me. So I'm for now gonna roll with that. That'll be all right. Gonna have to get away from it a little bit. but I want to use something to pull your eye back from in there. And I'd really like to get this a little taller up. And I've got options, I've got lots of options. So, and ideally, this is not a dirty tank yet. If this was a dirty tank, I'd have more substrate depth to play with and it'd be easier to stick these sticks in there. So. This, by the way, is the first, uh, gravel I've used in the small tank series, or excuse me, the first uh, driftwood that I have used in the small tank series. Take a look. 
yeah, it's all right. So I like this coming up here. I'm not nuts about that. I need to bring something. Eh, I might just leave that. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Kind of work through it. Not bad. Now I want to mound the rocks behind it a little bit so it's kind of coming out. So I'm going to need to get more rocks. More rocks coming up. Smash some more rocks. Rock smash. I hit like a little small child. Couple of big breaks. This is the size that I'm going for right here. This is the good stuff. I wish I had like five of this exact piece actually. That'll work. Time to add more rocks. I'm taking more rocks up this side right here. That's coming. And actually, I'm going to make that work. Yeah. I don't like that branch going up there. You can use the little rocks to pull it in. coming. Take a break. Okay, so I like the actual design of the hardscape we have going. We do have a tiny bit of structural work that I want to do, but overall, the general flow is good. I'm actually going to mess that up a little bit because I've got some structural and some foundation work to do here because I want to grow plants up and out of the top of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in for you all. And I'm going to show you now. This is the part where it gets a little tricky, and it's a little, uh, I don't know, not so not so easy to do. Because what I want to do is I don't want to mess up the color contrast I have here and here. But I am going to use some of the dark substrate from our friends at Fluval, the Fluval Stratum, and I want to kind of get it down in here. So I'm going to remove this as gingerly as I can, and I'm going to add. I got it in a. This stuff's been pre-rinsed, but I'm going to add this back here. Now, what I don't want to do is I don't want to get it in the front or anything, so I'm going to be real careful. Ah. And, of course, I've got it everywhere, so I use too big of a handful. So I'm going to pile this stuff in the back here. And I'm going to have to pick out those little pieces I got. But I want some sort of a good substrate because pool filter sand is not giving you anything. So I'm going to take this. And that's the problem when you mix substrate colors is you tend to get it all over the place. So now i got you know, 10 little pieces to pick up, which in my opinion ruins the whole design when you have these tiny little black uh, pieces of substrate on the white substrate. So that's a buzz kill. But it is what it is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that big rock back over it. And then I'm going to plant a bunch of plants, and I'm going to add a bunch of smaller rocks. I really want to just trap that in there because I don't want it to be seen uh, in this scape here. So, And, of course, it's okay to put the pool filter sand back on there. I'll pick these out. Here's a shot from above. You can see I've got this kind of pinned back in here. Some people use cardboard as a divide there. I'm not doing that. But I really, although I kind of like the contrast, I'm actually going to probably cover it all up again with the rock design and the plants but that's you got to get it pinned back in there and i'm going to place the rocks back over it.
Now it's time for the fun part. Time to add some plants. We got some Anubius Afazeli right here, which actually took a beating and is growing back. So these are smaller and they will get bigger. I've got some wonderful species for you on a Sunday, baby. We got the Bronze Crypts. Now this is a huge plant. Uh, it probably, like I showed you guys earlier, it'll probably melt back and then come out the center. So this is not going to be how it's going to look in the tank. It's probably going to lose a lot of these leaves and then come back. And then I've got some wonderful Crypt Valense, this tall, long, skinny Crypt. And this is going to flow all through the tank, ideally. I'm going to try to get the water flow going so that the, this Crypt just like floats out here longer beyond all this. So uh, time to get it going. Let's get it wet first, see how it looks wet. So I'm going to spray her down. You can really see how it's going to pop when it's uh, wet. Now, I haven't covered all of the substrate, the, the blue ball stratum in the back there yet, because I'm going to uh, get the plants in and then add a little bit of pool filter sand over top of that. But let's go. We're going to go big ones first here. So I'm going to take these like so. And I'm, uh, I'm loving these Valencia I got in. These are turning out really nicely. Might melt back. Uh, with CO2, this plant will get a little bit of a red tint, which is pretty cool. But what I'm going for with it is the real thin, because I want to keep the uh, the scale real small. Like I couldn't, I wouldn't want to use a really giant, large leaf crypt here. That wouldn't really work. So I've got this in here. So I'm going to plop this down right in the center here. lay over like that. Take another one. Same deal. See the new growth coming in on here already. It's a good sign. Grab these. Now I don't trim roots. I like the long roots so I can put them in there. No problem. Some people are root trimmers. Good for you. Not this guy. It makes sense though if you trim the root the plant's like stimulated like oh I need to grow another root or whatever. So similar to trimming the leaves, how it produces new leaves made for the environment and the same thing with the roots, but I'm not a root trimming guy. I'm going to lay that in there like that. So then these will be flowing across the top. Oh, and if you ever get water on the glass, you're going to want to use the ShamWow. The ShamWow wipes it all away you don't have to worry about the water getting on the front of your uh your glass while you're filming for people on youtube you just use it it's like a chamois it's like a sponge you just gotta use it and wipe it off it'll be great it's good for your house good for your car your boat your rv your dog so we're gonna use the sham wow here to get this all uh wiped up better for you guys so you can see it a little better there we go all right, now not a whole lot going on there. We are going to adjust in the front. Now I've got some crypt. Uh, this is crypt spiralis. This is the hardiest crypt ever, in my humble opinion. And I'm going to lay this down in this, in this little crack right here. One of the few crypts I don't have a lot of problems with melting. I'm not saying you can't melt it. I'm just saying it may not. I'm going to put uh, two of these in the front. And these are going to get bigger as well, but not as tall as the, not as big as the uh, wonderful Valencia. So, it'll work out well. And they're also a little darker color too, so it'll give me a nice contrast, but it'll still have that crypt look. So wedge that down in there. It's pinned in there pretty good. I got another one right here. Small one's going to go in the front. So, and then I've got this Anubius Afazeli, which I'm, it's one of my favorite bulletproof. This is way harder than the Gigantia that I showed you a little bit ago, and I'm just going to tuck this for now back in here. With water, everything's going to change. 
But you'll notice again, I'm doing this all dry. Super, I mean, that's a pro tip, really. Using this, using everything dry is just so much easier to do. Easier to escape. I'm going to move into this one here. And I might take that off the zelly out and actually uh, tie it to the, the base of that driftwood yet. I'm not sure how that's going to look when it's dry. And uh, last but certainly not least, we've got this big, beautiful bronze crypt to give us some contrast. We've got the light green, we've got the dark green, we've got the medium green, and we've got the red. Red, brown, whatever you want to call it. But I want everything to be focal coming out of the center here. And uh, let's just uh, see how that looks. If you have one more Nubius, pop off back here. Notice I'm sticking with the pointy leaf uh, design. I'm keeping all the leaf structure kind of the same. The bronze crypt's a little more round, but the Apazelli's got a nice point to it. All the crypts have that crypt point to them. So that's kind of the look I'm going for in here. Time to add some water. And before I add water, I'm gonna make sure that all this stuff is in here good. So I'm gonna take a handful of this little rock right here and just kind of sprinkle it in throughout back here to kind of pin down that stratum. So I don't want that causing problems later. I don't want it coming out of the substrate. I don't want it getting over into my my little beach over there. So I'm adding this on here as kind of a precautionary measure. Some of it you can see, some of it you can't. And if I don't like the way it looks, I'll design it later when I'm in there. But for now, this is just to kind of get everything pinned in there, plants pinned in there, and then the substrate. Because I want good substrate for the plant growth. Because remember, plants absorb, I don't know, four to 400 times more nutrients through their roots. So I want to make sure they're fed there, but I also don't want that stuff to be seen necessarily because it doesn't go with the aesthetic I'm trying to pull off here. Yeah, it's not working up there. Nice break. Then this water is going to be cloudy as heck when I first fill it up. But that's okay. It needs a little something in there in that front. Fill up. It's time to fill her up using an old uh, kid's diaper, not used. And I'm just going to make sure that this is uh, on here with some of this wire that I love. Keep it from jetting. It's coming out a little too fast, but I'm going to put it in the far corner. So it's going to get cloudy. I'll rain it, drain it, fill it. Not using any decor at this point. Fill her up. Make some adjustments here. Pull this out. The crypts, they're real sensitive to temperature change. You want to make sure your temps are, uh, when in doubt, air on the slightly colder side with crypts. That's my experience anyway. Too much heat will shock them. See some of these leaves, they got to be trimmed, but for now, we're just kind of pulling them out. I got to get this Valencia up here. Get this kind of going. So the question is, how am I going to get it to? There we go. Kind of pull it up out here. Let it be wild.
and here's how we are looking after adding some plants on. I still have some more work to do here in the front, softening it up. However, the driftwood hasn't fully been uh, submerged yet, so it still kind of floats up on me. So I'm going to let that kind of soak some water in. Note, if you're having problems with driftwood sinking, you want to boil it. That seems to make it uh, sink a little bit faster. I do have some rocks that I don't like the placement of in there holding some of these down. I also added this Aquifer 20. These things are little beastly little filters, I gotta tell you. Uh, this thing, I looked it up, it actually was cleaning it so fast I had to see how many gallons per hour. It was doing 100 gallons per hour at its max flow. Even say if it's 80, that's eight times the volume of this tank in an hour. So that's that's cooking, having fun with this. Gonna get it over there so it pushes everything out. Also added one of my standard double lights on here. So yeah, I'm having a good time with it. I gotta say folks, thanks again to everybody helping me hitting 100,000 subscribers. It means a ton, it's been a goal I've been trying to hit for a long time. So thanks for all the support, the encouragement, the ideas, the love, like just means a ton. You can click the links around. I did a video on Friday with Rob from Clip Aquatics uh, helping me out with that video. So thank you so much, it means a ton. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Uh, if you're liking this, click the front, uh, it's like the front right button or whatever. You can click that, subscribe, and if you are subscribed, hit the notifications button. I am going live more often, just kind of doing random updates during the week of what I got going on. We can hang out. So, yeah, everybody have a fabulous freaking week. Let me know what you think about the small tank series and what we're doing with this tent. I got other videos around the small tank series. And tank on. Later.